Fabulous. Um, so as John said, I'm here to present on the behalf of Associate Professor Jane Burns um, from the new Cooperative Research Centre for Young People, Technology and Wellbeing. Um, we are a new federal government initiative um, that was announced in December last year um, and we've been funded to the tune of $27.5 million by the Australian government to really set up a research hub around the role of technology in improving wellbeing for young people aged 12 to 25. Um, so what I'm going to do today is actually um, spend just a minute or two talking about the challenge um, that faces us in regards to using technologies to improve wellbeing for this particular group uh, in the population. Talk a little bit about the role of technologies as being a solution across promotion, prevention, early intervention and treatment. And then finish off by giving you a bit of an overview of the new Cooperative Research Centre and what that might actually mean for yourselves as practitioners working with young people and indeed with people across the lifespan, um, but also more importantly, what that means for young people themselves. So, I suppose um, it's not news to you that um, drug and alcohol issues have a significant effect on young people's mental health and wellbeing. Um, we know that one in six young people aged 14 to 19 have used an illicit drug in the last 12 months. And we know that young women are more likely to have used a drug than males. Um, and this really creates, um, I guess, a, a picture around why we need to intervene early. Um, and it's the case across drug and alcohol issues as well as mental health and wellbeing. Um, so we sort of use some of these statistics really to create um, a bit of an argument for why this particular work is important. And I think when Jane put this presentation together, she actually put a fabulous pre uh, little digital story there from some young people talking about the effects that drug and alcohol um, issues had had on themselves and their peers. I'm not quite sure whether that's going to work, so I'm just going to move on. But imagine that there is a fabulous video created <laughs> by some young people on the effects of chroming. So there, I guess there are a number of reasons why technologies play an important role for young people around improving mental health and wellbeing. The Headspace Community Awareness Survey, which was conducted a couple of years ago now, um, involved a computer-assisted telephone interview of 2,000 young people aged 12 to 25. It found that 77% of the young people surveyed used the internet to connect with other young people um, and 39% actually used the internet to seek information about a mental health problem. And in this particular survey they took a very broad view of what that meant. Young people suggested in their responses that online services were a really important way of being able to provide information and referral. In particular, when asked to rank the types of online opportunities, they talked about the need for question and answer forums, so avenues to actually provide young people with really straightforward and easy to understand answers to some of the questions that they had around these health issues, um, and also the role of email support services. We know already that young people are using technologies in a variety of ways. Um, we know, for example, that 95% of young people in Australia use the internet on a regular basis. And social networking has fundamentally changed the way in which young people engage with their peers, with significant adults and with the service system. And you saw some fantastic examples today of interventions that have been developed specifically targeting particular issues. Mobile phones are a huge opportunity, I think, in this space. Um, and a few people talked about um, sort of new developments in this sector, which include the development of mobile-based applications. It's something like 57% of phones owned by young people are smartphones, so they're internet enabled, which really creates an enormous opportunity to be able to use these technologies in a way that delivers content to exactly where young people are. Um, because they've always got their mobile phones on them. 
there's similarly opportunities to use uh, things like virtual worlds and serious games to promote wellbeing in young people. And there's some really fantastic examples actually from the team at Victoria University who have been able to use the virtual world Second Life as a way of actually engaging with young people who have a variety of disabilities. Um, and it's really created an opportunity for these young people to participate and engage with services in a way that's really never been conceptualised before. And if the National Broadband Network delivers in the way that we intend, um, it provides a really fantastic avenue for really taking all of the types of online interventions that you've heard about um, directly to young people. I think the challenge with the NBN is that it really is a bit of a highway in search of a car. It's only as good as what we put on the road. And um, it, it's really important for us, I guess, to make sure that we have some of the most rigorously tested and, and scientifically based online interventions out there to improve wellbeing across a whole range of different issues. Technologies play a really important role, I think, in promoting help seeking for young people. Um, and this is an article that appeared in the Australian newspaper last year um, and provides, a, I guess, a bit of a case study of a young man called Doug who was supporting a friend who was going through a tough time. In fact, that friend was, was contemplating suicide. And rather than going straight to a support organisation, um, he went to Google. And we're finding this with a lot of young people that the first place they really seem to go behind family and friends, and this comes from the Mission Australia data, is they turn to the internet. And in particular, they type um, a variety of different keywords straight into Google. And so it's really important that we're all working to make sure that credible evidence-based information appears really high in those Google search rankings so that we can actually get that information straight out to young people. So I guess to give you an indication of what we are planning to do over the next uh, few years, five years in fact, geez this slide takes a while, <laughs> this is the thing about presenting someone else's information, you're really not quite sure what's going to come up next. So the Cooperative Research Centre for Young People, Technology and Wellbeing comes out of the work of the Inspire Foundation. Inspire being the organisation behind the online youth mental health service reachout.com. Um, so Inspire had been working in this space around young people, technology and wellbeing um, for about 12 years. And alongside that, we had really seen Australia become a world leader in the development of online interventions. Um, and in fact, the work that people like David and the team at QUT have been doing, and Helen Christensen, Kathy Griffiths, Julia, and, and others at ANU, um, as well as a whole variety of other players, have really positioned Australia really strongly in regards to the development of, of these types of opportunities. And so we felt that it was a really important and opportune time to bring together partners across um, the health community and academic sectors um, to really try and um, leverage the resources that we had at our disposal. So over a six month period, we went about pulling together um, 70 partners, um, which include partners across universities, government, um, industry. So we work with Google, Yahoo, Seven and Telstra um, and young people themselves to actually think about how we might use these technologies in a really integrated and coordinated way. Um, we raised about $6.7 million in cash from our partner organisations um, and managed to combine that with a investment of over $75 million in in-kind contributions. So we're talking big investment here um, to secure a grant from the federal government to the tune of $27.5 million. Which sounds like a lot of money, um, but when you actually think about the resources required to do this work in a, in a, in a really coordinated way and in a well-resourced way, um, that, that's how much it costs, I guess. And what we're trying to do is actually create a research program that looks at the role of technologies in young people's lives, so providing an integrated national data set looking at the role of technology and its relationship to wellbeing, um, to 
actually explore what the use of technology might mean for particular groups of young people that are at greater risk um, of mental health difficulties, of problematic substance use, of eating disorders. Um, and then actually look at how those technologies might be used in an early intervention treatment and relapse prevention context. Um, so it's, it's a really exciting opportunity, I think. And I guess the best way um, to describe the work that we do is to consider um, a young person who might be going through a tough time. So we know that the first place that young people, young person will often go is to their computer. Um, so behind family and friends, technology is where they tend to turn. So they might um, search for a term like depressed or self-harm or binge drinking or you know, a whole variety of different terms and come across a digital story that sits on YouTube that's been developed by one of our content partners. So that digital story might um, provide a bit of a case study of another young person who has experienced a similar issue. It might in fact be the video um, on chroming that Jane would have shown you had she been giving this presentation. Um, and then at the end of that video, it will actually create some links that takes the young person to an online wellbeing centre. The Online Wellbeing Centre brings together tools and applications developed by our partners, by people at QUT, by people at ANU, um, in a variety of formats, so online, mobile, etc., that the young person can then work through to be able to manage their own mental health and wellbeing. Perhaps through completing some of those activities online, the young person has some questions that they feel um, warrant a response and would support them to improve their wellbeing even further. So they might access an online question and answer service um, where they can actually go in and type a question which is then responded to by an organisation with the most relevant um, knowledge and expertise in that particular area. What might come up though in creating that response to that young person is a bit of a flag that perhaps that young person needs um, some more help and support. So they get referred to an e-mental health clinic, um, which may, um, which is I guess about creating a, a bit of a, an avenue for all of the different clinical and early intervention services um, to be accessed in one place. Because I think while there are some absolutely fabulous resources out there in the community, one of the ongoing challenges that we face in this space is making sure that young people and those who care for them know exactly where those services are and how they can be accessed um, in the best ways. That e-mental health clinic, um, once the young person has actually completed some different modules, so it might be some of the modules provided by ANU, it might be actually linking into on track um, that's been developed by the guys at QUT, the young person might actually feel that they just need a little bit of help and support to keep themselves um, safe and well. So they might use something like a mobile phone mood monitoring tool that's been developed by some of our CRC res uh, researchers um, to keep themselves um, happy and healthy along the way. So it's really about creating a really coordinated environment in which we can bring together all of the different tools and applications um, that are out there for young people. Our first speaker today talked a little bit about some of the challenges that face the AOD sector um, in terms of engaging with technologies. Um, time is a really big factor, expertise is a really big factor. Um, and really just not knowing which services um, are best in an, an arena where there are so many different options, um, all of which um, you know, are appropriate at, at different times and places. So one of the things that we have been resourced to do through this new CRC is to actually provide an education and training program called DigiEd, which is around supporting um, a variety of different sectors and a variety of different workforces to be able to use these technologies. Um, so the provision of both online and face-to-face -face training for health professionals, for AOD workers, for youth workers, for teachers 
to actually support them to understand the types of technologies that are out there and how they might actually be able to be used. So I guess just to finish off, it's, it really is a bit of a watch this space. Um, we have only officially been up and running for six weeks. That, that was when we signed our agreement with the Commonwealth Government to kick off. Um, and, you know, a lot of these uh, projects are very much work, works in progress and it's about bringing people together to work in, in that coordinated way. Um, I would, I guess, finish by inviting you all to join our Youth and Wellbeing Network or Your Net. Um, which is a way for you to keep up to date with different developments in this sector um, with a particular focus on the role of these technologies in improving mental health and wellbeing um, for young people across um, that sort of 12 to 25 age group. And when we talk about mental health and wellbeing, we're absolutely talking about drug and alcohol issues and eating disorders and a whole variety of different um, experiences that young people might have. Um, so thank you so much for the opportunity to present and um, I hope I've managed to do Jane's presentation justice.